Hey there, we are live from Midtown Comics Times Square. I am Henry, and it is New Comic Book Day. Happy Wednesday to you guys. Of course, it is a wonderful week in the world of comics. There's a lot of really cool stuff coming out. So we're going to walk through, and we're going to talk about all the amazing books that are coming out this week. And we're going to get started right now by talking about some of the very cool books that our staff here have selected for their picks. So first off, Jason has picked Southern Bastards by Jason Aaron and Jason Latour. I wonder if he's got a bias because of their names. But seriously, he is a huge fan of the series, and it's a great read, so I do recommend it myself. Then we also have Luke picking Doom Patrol with the weirdest cover of any book this week, and it's a fantastic read if you guys have not been checking it out. We also have Tyler recommending X-Men Blue. Of course, the cross-time capers storyline has been crazy from Cullen Bunn, taking the X-Men on a journey we never would have expected. Then we have the brand new Mega Man Master Mix, a huge oversized book. We'll talk about it in a bit, and Fabian put it for his pick this week. And then Izzy recommended Backways from Aftershock, a very cool new series. And we're going to bring it down and talk about the new releases this week, starting with Dark Horse and Department H depth i love i love i always love the play on words here with this a really fantastic series from matt kent always has cool wraparound covers which i think are super cool i'm a big fan of what they do with that series we also have the brand new issue of empowered sister spookies high school hell very fun series from empowered we also have the brand new issue of Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil. It's from the world of Black Hammer. So Jeff Lemire and David Rubin are tying this in with their main narrative. And it's really cool. And it's a great chance to explore Sherlock Frankenstein, who is, of course, a persistent foe of uh, the Black Hammer himself. A very cool side story that is worth checking out. We also have the brand new series, Vinegar Teeth, from Troy Nixie and Damon Gentry, really cool stuff here, really fun if you want kind of like a noir, a little bit of a dark story, this is a great one to check out. And then if you want something fun and uh, with a nice cool edge, the Zodiac Star Force Cries of the Fire Prince, issue number three. I've really enjoyed the Zodiac Star Force books in the past, they're a lot of fun. Some really fantastic art from Paulina uh, Gunachea, and Kevin Panetta does a great job as well. Now we move on and we hit DC, and it is a really cool week. We've got the brand new issue of Batgirl. As we see, Batgirl and Penguin as uh, the newest crime-fighting duo. Of course, Batgirl kind of begrudgingly has to protect Oswald, Co Oswald Cobblepot as uh, you know she's trying to stop him from dying because she's a hero and you never let anybody die and begrudging allies, you know? We also have the brand new issue of Batman Beyond. We've got this very cool cover from Dave Johnson, but I actually really dig uh, Bernard Chang's main cover as well. Enter Stalker, a new uh, crazy adventure for Terry McGinnis in the far-flung future. Now as we move on, we also have the brand new issue of Detective Comics, and if this variant cover by Raphael Albuquerque doesn't have you worried, Last issue's events were absolutely crazy, as we're seeing a more powerful version of Clayface than we've ever seen before. The Victim Syndicate really seems to have dug in deep, hitting him where it hurts, and I am actually really terrified to see what happens in this issue, because I am way too emotionally invested in this team, and I'm super excited. Fantastic book. Please check it out if you haven't been already. Now we're going to hit a huge selection of reprints. So we're just going to go through them quick. We've got Batman Lost, which was a side story exploring uh, Batman throughout multiple different times in his life. We've got Batman the Dawnbreaker, which is basically what if Batman was Green Lantern instead. Very cool, very twisted, a uh, very different depiction of the Dark Knight. We also have Batman the Drowned. Now obviously you'll notice a big difference. It is a universe where all of the gender roles are reversed, and it is a very dark and twisted take on Aquaman, and it's really cool, and I really like what they do with it. <clears throat> We've got Batman the Merciless, which is like a Batman-Wonder Woman fusion. He goes absolutely mad with power after something terrible happens to Diana. Then we have Batman the Murder Machine, who is, of con course, connected with all the different uh, computers and technology of Gotham City. And what happens with Alfred here is really cool. Then we have Batman the Red Death, which I loved, and this is actually a third printing for this one. 
Uh, actually, I'm sorry, fourth printing for this one. And this book has been incredible, and it's just it's one of my favorite one shots of last year. It's Batman as an evil version of the Flash using all of the Rogue's weaponry. Awesome. Now we do move on to the regular books this week as we hit the new issue of Gotham City Garage. Very cool cover here from Tula Lote showing off, of course, Supergirl and Poison Ivy. And they have a very prominent role in this post almost post-apocalyptic wasteland, basically. Then we have the end of Nightwing, the New Order, the six-issue miniseries from uh, DC that was exploring... Uh, dystopia basically version of the DC universe everything is messed up and it's all because of Dick Grayson now uh, the boy of wonder has to I, I like how they put the boy of wonder he has to suffer the consequences of his actions as the laws that he put into action uh, fight against his family then we have the brand new issue of Blue Beetle issue number 17 a very cool cover here from Scott Collins and there should be Another cover as well. Some really great stuff from Chris Bulba and Scott Collins on art here as well. We have the brand new issue of The Demon, Hell is Earth from Brad Walker, focusing on Etrigan the Demon. And Etrigan is always a great character. I was going to flip it open, and I flipped it open to an advertisement for the Terrifics. But some really cool art here, really great. I think that Brad Walker does a fantastic job depicting the demon. Uh, really cool Kirby design and a really cool series if you haven't been checking it out. Now we do have the brand new issue of Doom Patrol and we've got the variant cover here and then we've got the regular as well. This book is so weird and like Doom Patrol is always weird but like let's look at this cover and just think about how uh, unsettling it is to see a cat with human eyes like that but it is really fun it is a great read and uh, as they get ready for the Milk Wars crossover starting next week this is uh, gonna be a really great story to see how it plays out in respects to that new direction then we have of course one of the biggest books of the week we have Doomsday Clock issue number three you can see Batman there on the cover with Rorschach's journal and that already has me very curious and very excited, especially if you guys read last issue and you've seen a couple of the, uh, the character pairings that we have now. We have some really crazy stuff going on in this book. Jeff Johns, Gary Frank are doing a great job. It was one of the best-selling comics of all of last year, and it is a fantastic book. Check it out. I cannot recommend it enough because it is telling a story that fans have been very uh, torn about for many 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 years and now we get to see how it plays out and it's really something you're not going to want to miss now we are going to bump it up and we're going to talk about some of the cool graphic novels we've got this week starting off with only the end of the world again from neil gaiman and p craig russell some great stuff we also see a bit of uh, troy nixie and matt hollingsworth i always uh, dig matt hollingsworth stuff we also have the Predator Hunters trade paperback. Of course, I had, I loved all the covers that they did for this book. I'm really glad to see that they translated that to the trade dress as well. A very cool Predator series from Dark Horse. Then we have Aquaman Volume 4 Underworld. Now, this was one of my favorite stories in the Rebirth Aquaman title. It's got the art of Stepan Sedgwick, and if you've never seen his art, dude is, like, crazy talented. I mean, he does the entire book here. Let's just literally flip it open to a random page, and let me see if I can get a better grab on, uh, grip on the book. But just all of the art in this is really incredible. He, I don't know how he does it. I really don't. He's just got a great sense of direction and a great sense of action. This book is fantastic. Not enough people are talking about Aquaman. you got to check it out. It really is an incredible book. We also have Checkmate by Greg Rucka, book two. Now, this is really great. Now, I believe, yeah, this collects the conclusion of the series. And what I really like is it collects the checkout crossover storyline with The Outsiders, which is a really great read and really uh, culminates what Greg Rucka builds in Checkmate so well. I think it's a fantastic read and definitely something you guys should go back and check out. There's only two books of it, so you just buy book one, book two. You got the whole thing. Definitely worth investing in. 
Then we move on and we've got the main man himself, Lobo, Volume 1 by Keith Giffen and Alan Grant. Now, this is really cool because I don't think we've ever gotten trade paperbacks of the classic Lobo stuff. So this is Lobo 1 through 4, the Lobo, oh my God, it's got the Lobo Paramilitary Christmas Special. That's awesome. It, they put it in there. Uh, we've also got Lobo's Back, Lobo uh, Blazing Chain of Love, and Lobo Convention Special. So it's got a ton of different stuff in there. Really great. And the Paramilitary Christmas Special, I'm telling you, one of the weirdest comics I've ever read. Awesome, though. Super cool. We also have the Golden Age Superman Omnibus Volume 5. If you are looking to co collect the classic Superman, this is a great way to do it. Very cost-effective. And we also have Hellblazer, The Gift by Mike Carey. This is volume 18 of the Hellblazer series. And this collects, what does it collect through? What, uh, it doesn't say, on, oh no, through issue 215. So, whoa, there's still going to be a lot more collections. But Hellblazer, of course, one of Vertigo's greatest books. I think it was their longest running book ever because it ran for 300 issues. So, kind of crazy. Now, we are going to bring it back down and we've got, a book I'm very excited for, of course, I'm talking about Flash. Now, it's issue number 39 of the current series, but thanks to this lovely variant cover, it's also issue number 700 of The Flash. If you look at all the books, you add them all together, you get 700. Very cool cover here. I really like this from Tony S. Daniel, who, of course, did Flash, Fastest Man Alive, which was the Bart Allen series when he was uh, the Scarlet Speedster. But back to the present, we've got a very cool issue here by Joshua Williamson and Carmine D.G. and Domenico where we get to see Gorilla Grodd popping back up in the life of Barry Allen. And literally every time Grodd has ever been in The Flash's life, something horrible has happened to The Flash. So you, you always want to check out a Grodd story. And especially with uh, Carmine D.G. and Domenico on the art, it's going to be gorgeous. Now we'll move on, and we've got Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, issue number 37. They're... Should be a variant cover, which is right there. And this variant cover definitely spells doom for our heroes as it uh, doesn't look like they're going to be doing too well. The series has been a lot of fun, but with the onslaught of General Zod, can they stand up to a truly merciless uh, Man of Steel, basically? We also have the brand new issue of Hellblazer from the current series, a very cool book, and I love that we got a Sean Phillips variant cover on it. I think that is super cool, and that is uh, personally one of my favorite covers of the week. Very cool book if you want to check out a nice uh, occult read, I guess. You know, mystical, dark, all that fun stuff. Uh, very dark and very cool. We also have Justice League of America issue number 23. Now, if you guys have been paying attention to the internet, there has been a bit of an uproar over this book as we've seen some really crazy stuff going on with the return of the Queen of Fables, but also, literally, the character that appears on the last page is going to make people lose their mind, and I'm very curious to see what happens in this book and how it plays out. We also have the new issue of Rough and Ready, issue number four. Very cool book from Howard Chaikin. And we have the brand new issue of Suicide Squad, issue number 34. Really digging this Will Sportaccio cover over here. And it's a feeding frenzy. The Suicide Squad always embarking on crazy missions. And honestly, cannibalism, you know, that's, that's not a great thing. So we move on, and we've, of course, got Action Comics number 996. We are getting really dangerously close to 1,000. And, of course, Action Comics blew everybody's mind with their announcement last week that Superman is going to be getting his red trunks back. But as fun as that is right now, we just have to see if Superman can make it through this fight alongside Booster Gold against uh, a new Zod reimagined as uh, the timeline is kind of in flux and there's some crazy stuff going on here. You're not going to want to miss out. If you guys are, you know, if you guys are waiting for a thousand, pick pick it up now. Pick up this latest story because it's got Booster Gold and Dan Jurgens is having a lot of fun with Will Conrad on art. Then we move on and we have a brand new mini series featuring Raven, Daughter of Darkness, written by Marv Wolfman, of course the creator of Raven herself. A very cool chance to check out Raven on her own. She's always been one of the most popular. Uh, Teen Titans characters, and it's great to see that she's going to be having an expanded solo run as well. 
Then as we continue on, we've got a reprinted edition of Teen Titans that tied in with the Dark Knight's Metal storyline. Very cool. And we also have the brand new issue of Teen Titans proper. Now, once again, we've got a cool cover here by uh, Chad Harden. But we have Marv Wolfman jumping in for the issue. So it's really cool. We get two issues of Teen Titans with Marv Wolfman this week. That is crazy. It's like it's the 80s or something. It's awesome. Uh, really dig what's going on over there. Lots of fun. And, uh, of course, we have to deal with the fallout from Super Sons of Tomorrow, which rock the Teen Titans to their core. Then we move on, and we've got issue number 11 of The Wild Storm from Warren Ellis and John Davis Hunt. We've got a couple cool covers here. Let's see... Uh, there should be a third. There's a third, a cool Jim Lee cover as well. Uh, Wildstorm has been one of the most exciting reimaginings of the property since its inception. And if you guys haven't been checking it out, Warren Ellis is really doing a cool job of expanding on the lore and bringing it to a modern age. Then we also have the new issue of Wonder Woman. I love these Jenny Friesen covers. I feel like I talk about them every time we do it because they're just so cool. James Robinson. Uh, Swan Song, we get to see some crazy stuff going on with Wonder Woman as she faces off against an old foe bring, being brought in for the first time in, I mean, God, it's got to be like a decade or something like that since we've seen her. And it is really cool, really great. And Manuela Lupacino on art, always fantastic. Then we continue on, and we've got the third issue of Imaginary Friends from Vertigo, a cool, twisted horror book. Uh, out of the w mind of Tim Seeley, who you know he loves doing weird, twisted horror books all the time. Then we move on, and we have the brand new series, Abbott, from Saladin Ahmed, who, of course, you guys will recognize the name because he's been the superstar writer for uh, Black Bolt, doing some really cool stuff, and now getting to explore a solo detective series. I am really excited for this. Boom has been putting out so many fantastic books. you got to check it out. We also have the brand new issue of Go Go Power Rangers, issue number six. And I'm going to the back because I got to pull out uh, this great bulk cover because I, I like bulk and skull quite a bit. And the Go Go Power Rangers book has been a lot of fun. It's really great. And it's got the sensational art of Dan Mora. And I love Dan Mora's art, whether it be on Klaus, WWE, or Power Rangers. Really fantastic. And a great read if you are a fan of the Rangers as myself. Now, we move on, and we've got the brand new, I believe this is heavy metal, right? Am I crazy? No, it's a Fantagraphics book, actually. It just looks crazy, and I know literally nothing except that I am marginally terrified. So if you want to check out something marginally terrifying, there you go. It's right there. Have nightmares. Now we move on, and we do hit the Mega Man Master Mix. Now, there's a very cool blank here. And it's a huge issue. It's a quarterly series exploring Mega Man, and it's really great. The Blue Bomber returns, and I want to show off because I know we've got a couple different covers here. So we've got one cover and two covers, and I believe there's more. Uh, there's incentive covers as well. Really cool, really pretty book from Udon, who, of course, do so many cool video game adaptations. Now we're going to bump it up, and we'll talk about some of the cool collections we've got over here, including Savage Things. Savage Things is messed up, man. Justin Jordan does a great job on the book with Ibrahim uh, Mustafa on art. But, like, really? Like, you go th into Savage Things and you're like, yeah, no, it's probably going to be, like, cool. It's going to be messed up. No, it's really messed up, like, right away. So if you want, like, a dark book that, like, you can't not give to kids, check out Savage Things. But it's awesome. It's really good. I don't want to tell you too much, but it's worth it. We also have the second volume of WWE. You see... Oh, this book is so much fun. It's Dennis Hopeless and Serge Okuna on art here. And it's a great read. We get to see Dean Ambrose facing off against Brock Lesnar and taking a journey across America alongside Sasha Banks. And those are words that just came out of my mouth that make me very happy because this book makes me very happy. It's very fun. And it's a great way to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Raw, which, of course, was just two days ago. Now we move on, and we've got the third volume of the new Exo Manowar series. Some cool stuff from Matt Kent and Clayton Crane and Renato Guedes on art, which is absurd. That creative team is incredible. Some really cool stuff if you want to check out Exo Manowar. It is, of course, the flagship character for Valiant Comics, and they do a great job with his book. Uh, it's Matt Kent. He always writes good books. He doesn't, he doesn't ever write bad books. Really great read. We also have volume five of Back to the Future, Time Served, a very cool adventure 
uh, featuring Marty on the dock. You got to love it. And then we move on and we hit Time and Vine, a fun book for all you winos out there. You know, it's a great read. It's a good, uh, fun time. And it's definitely great to see just the solo vision of something that you normally don't get to see. You don't normally, there aren't a whole lot of wine comics. So it's pretty cool. I really, I got to appreciate that. We also have Optimus Prime Volume 2, a very cool continuation of the hit series. And then we have Renato Jones Freelancer Season 2. So the Renato Jones series started off a while back. It's Carrie Kyle Andrews who's doing everything on it, created, written, drawn, colored, and owned by Carrie Kyle Andrews. And it really is a great read. And uh, actually, we're going to be talking more about him in just a couple minutes because he's got another book this week. So very cool stuff, though. I love his art. Then we've got a reprint of Maestro's issue number three, second printing. And we also have the brand new Postal issue number 25. And as we continue on, we've got Savage Dragon Archives, volume nine, huge book. This is collecting issues 201 through 225. So you're getting 25 comics for only $25? Are you kidding me? That's 25 comics for $25. That's a dollar a comic. That's an amazing deal. That is awesome. Check out the Savage Dragon Archives, guys. That's like the best deal we have in all week. We also have the new Spy Seal, the Court and Steel Phoenix. Very cool uh, book from Image Comics, of course, the Spy Seal. Uh, the Spy Seal series has been coming out for a while now, and it's cool to see it collected in a nice oversized edition. Now, we'll bring it back down to talk about some of the cool new releases, and we've got the brand new issue of Ninjak from Christos Gage and Thomas Giorello. Very cool. A couple different covers here to show off because Valiant always has uh, some great covers. Show off a couple of these. And, of course, it is a crazy ride as Ninjak is hunting down the person who's hunting down the ninja, you know, guys. Like all the different representatives of MI6. He is now hunting them down, so it's kind of like self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, you know, he's being hunted and hunting the hunter and they're hunting, you know, the whole thing. But it's a great read. And check it out if you haven't been. It's really a fantastic book. We also have the brand new issue of Exo Manowar, issue number 11. And what I really love seeing is that this issue is literally the next issue after the trade paperback. So if you pick up that collection, you can just jump right in to the regular adventures. And it is really great. It is a really cool read. And Exo Manowar, I mean, it's Space Conan. What's not to love? A couple different covers here. Show them off. Always pretty. Always got some of the best artists in comics on Exo Manowar. We also have the comic book history of comics, the four color uh, adventures, and it's very cool because we're, I like this because I love the actual history of comics. It's such a weird history and medium and the way that things have evolved, and it is definitely great to see uh, Fred Van Lente really exploring it and really doing a great job. And of course, you see Jack Kirby there on the cover, so it's a comic book about Jack Kirby basically, and that's pretty awesome. Then we move on, and we've got Frankenstein Alive Alive Trio. A very cool book from Steve Niles. This is actually one of the prettiest presentations of any books we have this week because it's got the nice foil lettering, but it's also got just a really fantastic paper quality. It just is really cool and nice. And a book I'm super excited for, we've got Curtis Weeb on Gears of War Rise of Rom, and that makes me super happy because I'm a huge Gears of War fan, and Rom is, of course, like the coolest dude. I mean, he is absolutely devastating. And in the Gears of War franchise, there's nobody that's cooler. So it's really great to see that the Gears of War property is being explored once more in this great prequel to the original game. You know I'm picking it up. Hopefully you guys are too because it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, a lot of blood. A lot of blood. You can see all the blood. It's, it's Rom. You know, that he likes to kill people. We also have the final issue of Judge Dredd, The Blessed Earth. And I like that every cover has got the big old final issue uh, button on it. Uh, very cool uh, side adventure for Judge Dredd that explores him in a way that we've never seen him before. We also have the newest issue of Kid Lobotomy uh, from Peter Milligan and Tess, uh, or, uh, Tess Fowler. Really cool book. Fun couple covers there. And we have Rom Micronauts issue number two. This is... A very cool crossover between two of Hasbro's beloved franchises. A couple different covers. Great read. Definitely worth checking out. 
And then we have Star Trek Discovery, The Light of Collis. Couple covers here. And very cool because we actually get a photo cover. And yeah, there should be more. It looks like uh, it's flying off the shelf because I actually don't think we have all the covers. But it's a great read if you're a fan of the latest Star Trek Discovery series. Then we have 30 Days of Night, which is back. Steve Niles re-examining and re-exploring his comic book franchise that he created uh, 15 years ago. So really cool to see that. And we also have Transformers The Lost Light, brand new issue, issue number 13. A very fun cover here showing the destructive tendencies of these Transformers. I mean, come on. why? Look at these cartoonish bombs. It's just fun. It is really great. And if you're a fan of the Transformers franchise, you got to be checking out the comics because it's really the best way to keep up with the franchise, and it's establishing and expanding the lore so much. Now, we do hit Image, and we've got Black Cloud issue number two from Jason Latour and Ivan Brandon. Very cool stuff. And we also have the brand new issue of Black Magic, a very creepy but very cool cover uh, by Nicholas Scott. And we'll also show off the variant here. Of course, Greg Rock and Nicholas Scott have been doing a good job on this book since day one. Kind of taking a bit of a hiatus for a while, but now we are getting back to the uh, regular adventures. And it is something you'll want to check out. It's unlike any other book on the shelf. Then we move on to Black Science, issue number 34 from Rick Remender and Matteo Scalera. Very cool, high concept sci-fi. couple cool covers there. And then we also have uh, Disengage? Dissonance. Dissonance. Dissonance issue number one. Brand new book with a lot of style. Very cool. It is a really cool typeface. Uh, really cool new series. If you want to check out something new from Top Cow, who are always innovating and always creating and always trying to do cool things uh, as a side imprint of image. We also have the brand new issue of Gasolina issue number five and issue number four of Maestro. So for whatever reason you missed out on issue three, you could pick up the reprint, you could pick up issue number four, and there you go, you're caught up. We also probably, we maybe we have the back issues. Maybe not, because it, it sells out, because it's a really popular series. So you guys should come by and pick it up, because it's gorgeous. Steve Scrooge is doing a great job on the book. Now we'll move on, and we've got Manifest Destiny, issue number 33. A very uh, dark, a very... Uh, unfortunate cover here. Uh, nobody wants to be drowned like that. And we also have the brand new issue of Monstrous. Monstrous is back. It's been gone for a while, but now we get to see it return. Marjorie Lou and Sana Takeda really doing a great job on this book. If you haven't checked it out before, now is the chance to jump in. You can pick up the paperbacks. There was a bit of a hiatus. It's easy to jump in and just look at how ridiculously pretty this is. The detail on this is absurd. Like, actually absurd. It's amazing. It's unlike any other book. It really is. It's super awesome, and you should check it out. And then we've got the brand new issue of Moonstruck, a very fun comedy series of sorts from Image, doing a great job. And we're going to bring it up, and we're going to talk about some of the collected editions that are out this week. And we've got the Immortal Iron Fists, plural. This is... Uh, Kerry Kyle Andrews, I told you that I'd be talking about him again. And this is very cool. It's a follow-up to his Iron Fist, the Living Weapon series. And it was originally only available in digital. So it is the first time that it is being made available in print. It actually literally says first time in print. And it is a great chance to follow up on uh, Kerry Kyle Andrews' crazy run on Iron Fist. Then we move on to the Guardians of the Galaxy Telltale Games series. Very cool from Fred Van Lente and Salvador Espen. A great adventure if you're a fan of the Telltale video games. And we also have the Iron Man Epic Collection, Doom. Of course, in modern times, we've really seen Doctor Doom play an important role in the life of Tony Stark in continuing his legacy. And here we get to see, ooh, we get to see the Camelot stuff. This is awesome. Uh, so this is the stuff from 1989 through 1990. Volume 15 of the Epic Collection. You know, they don't print them in order. They just print them out and tell you where it goes. So eventually they'll all be out. And it's issues 245 through 257. And it's got some extra stuff in there. And it's Iron Man and Doctor Doom and Merlin. I mean, I'm sold on that alone. And it's called Doom. It's awesome. We also have the brand new volume of Punisher. The conclusion of Becky Clunan's run with some Chris Anka on art here. 
Uh, King of the New York streets. Parental advisory not for kids, definitely. Becky Cloonan's got a twisted sense to her that plays very well to punish her and is definitely worth checking out. We also have the brand new volume of Amazing Spider-Man Worldwide Volume 7. This is the beginning of the Marvel Legacy run of the characters, so we get to see Dan Slott and Stuart Amonen exploring life after Parker Industries for uh, Peter Parker, and it is a really great read. If you missed out on it a few months back, now is your chance. I definitely think that uh, fans will be really happy to see the status, excuse me, the status quo shift that uh, Peter embarks upon. We also have Old Man Logan issue, or issue, volume number six, Days of Anger. There's two different editions, which is really cool. So there's a black and white edition, and there's a regular edition. And let's just uh, consult and confirm. It is actually all in black and white. That is super cool. So if you want like a black and white noir take on it, it's very cool. And what I like about this volume of Old Man Logan is it's actually following up on the Maestro Hulk and some of the crazy stuff that Logan's got a lot of baggage from the like his world, from the wasteland and all that. So now we get to see that transplanted into the current continuity, and it really is great. And Ed Brisson does a fantastic job with Mike Diodato Jr. on art. Now a book that I immediately had to pick up because it's the first time it's all being collected. It is New Mutants Back to School, the complete collection. So this is actually the New Mutants book that ran in 2003 from Nunzio to Phillips. And it's really fun. It's really cool. And it introduced the world to a lot of characters that would become X-Men mainstays later on uh, throughout their various books in the New X-Men and the New X-Men Academy X and all those different series over the years, X-Force and stuff like that. And it is a great read if you're looking for some good New Mutants adventures. And also, like I said, it's the first time it's all being collected. Previously, only half the book was collected, so I had to pick it up because I'm a New Mutants fan. Then we also have the brand new volume of X-Men Gold. This is volume number three, but what's really great is that this is actually the crossover... So it's got X-Men Blue number 13 through 15 and X-Men Gold 13 through 15 because, of course, it was Mojo Worldwide, a crazy adventure from Mark Guggenheim and Cullen Bunn with some really fantastic art as we got to see all the X-Men teaming up and facing off against Mojo. Check it out. Now we'll bring it back down and we'll conclude our image books with the brand new issue of Redneck. Of course, Donny Cates has been you know, blowing up over the last year. One of the most popular writers in comics. You gotta check out Redneck, which is one of his most popular reads. We also have the brand new issue of Regression, a very cool book from Cullen Bunn. And we've got Ringside, issue number 14 from Joe Keating. Very cool wrestling comic book, and I'm a big wrestling fan, so you know I'm a big fan of uh, Ringside. And we also have the return of Sex Criminals with issue number 21, Spaces. This cover is not I mean, I love that they do this, the not safe for work covers, and I also love that they put price them four sixty nine because that's hilarious. But this book is really great. It's really fun. If you've never checked it out, you got to pick it up. There are four collections of it, and after the, you know, after what just happened in the last volume, four G, we've really had some crazy uh, status quo shifts that completely changed the dynamic of the series. And, you know, the whole title of the book is called Sex Criminals, but if there's no sex, are they still criminals? It's actually a really good question so you got to check it out then we have the brand new issue of southern bastards that we talked about earlier jason aaron jason latour and jason recommended so very cool uh exploration of what it's like to be in a town that's uh out of control and then we have the third issue of warframe uh cool series from top cow now we hit marvel and Marvel's got a lot of great stuff, including the Avengers Infinity War Prelude from Corona Pilgrim. Really cool cover here, actually, because I love the promotional materials that they've had for Avengers Infinity War. And if you guys are excited, you know, there are only 99 days now until Avengers Infinity War comes out. So we are getting real close to, I mean, honestly, an unprecedented movie. So you guys will probably want to check out the comic book so you are sure that you're up to date on everything going with it. We also have the signed edition of Avengers No Surrender from Jim Zub, who was very nice and joined us two weeks ago for a fantastic signing. 
And so we've got issue number 675, and then we've got issue number 677. That's right, because Avengers is weekly. Don't worry, we've got 676 as well, so you guys can easily pick up the signed edition of the book, catch up on the book, and then read the new issue where Quicksilver gets to take center stage. And I like Quicksilver, so I really like seeing him getting a little bit more of a spotlight. But honestly, what happens in this issue... I'm really, I'm really curious to see how next issue goes because it is not a good look for a number of different people, and I really want to know uh, if and how they get out of it because I, I don't think that they're all making it out safe, to be honest. Mark Wade, Al Ewing, Jim Zub, and uh, Pepe Larraz, who was just announced as one of Marvel's new young guns. So very cool, very exciting. And we've got the Assad Ribbit cover, which we did sell out of online, I believe, so you can only pick it up in store. Now we have the brand new issue of Black Panther, issue 169, which of course also features an Avengers cover from Marcos Martin, and I love Marcos Martin. And very cool, as we get to see Ta-Nehisi Coates continue Black Panther, we get to see him kind of actually playing with the rest of the world, you know, outside of Wakanda, which is good, uh, just to evolve the character. Then we have the brand new issue of Inhumans Judgment Day, and it is a conclusion to a lot of what's been going on with the Inhumans over the last year, because we've seen royals, they've had to deal with all the stuff with the progenitors, and kind of exploring the root of what makes them inhuman, and now we get to see how it plays out, Al Ewing and Mike Del Mundo on art, and Mike Del Mundo's art is awesome. I also really dig this Daniel Lacuna variant, or that's the regular cover, the Marcos Martin. Marcos Martin's doing covers, I'm so happy. Uh, Marcos Martin is on the variant, so it's a great read, check it out. Then we have the brand new issue of Luke Cage, caged in issue number 169. Very cool stuff here. And we also have Marvel 2-in-1. We've got a couple different covers here. We've got the cool Gabriel Delato Avengers variant cover. But we also have the regular one from Jim Chung, who, of course, does the interior art as well. This is one of the prettiest books that you will find. I'm just going to literally open this to a random page and just look at those landscapes. Look at the detail. He really does an incredible job. And what I actually really like is I really love what happens with the washes and the colors and how they do all the flashback sequences. Really great. And if you're a Fantastic Four fan like me, Fantastic Four was one of the things that got me into comics. You have to check this out. You are missing out on a great Fantastic Four adventure if you're not. Then we have the brand new issue of Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 794 from Dan Slott, Christos Gage, and Stuart Amonin. Some really cool stuff here as uh, Threat Level Red begins uh some crazy stuff as we build up to uh issue number 800 it's right around the corner we also have in the backup there's uh you see that little wolverine sticker right there so you know that uh we've got a little wolverine backup story in here so pick it up for that to see what wolverine has been up to i mean he's just kind of hanging out right then we've got the brand new issue of poe dameron very cool from charles sewell and uh paul and Zweta. And we also have the brand new issue of Thanos. And let's just look at this right here. So we've got future, old, conqueror, Thanos. We've got the Hulk on a leash. And then we've got the Ghost Rider who's gone power cosmic and is literally like the coolest thing ever. Like that is like my favorite thing that was created last year. It is a fantastic read. Donny Cates is blowing the world away with his work uh, on this book. So you got to check it out. It really is a great read. And also just look at this. He's got the Hulk on a leash. Who can do that? Thanos can do that, you know? Now we move on and we've got, we've got an upside down one there. But <laughs> we've got Old Man Hawkeye issue number one signed by Ethan Sachs. Of course, Ethan joined us for a signing as well. Very fun, very cool book if you want to check out the world of Old Man Logan, but a prequel series focusing on Hawkeye, who I'm a big Hawkeye fan, so I really like it. Check it out. Then we also have Peter Milligan returning to the X-Men franchise with Legion issue number one, a brand new series. We've got this very cool Bill Sinkowicz cover, which we have sold out of online, so the only way you're going to get it is if you come to the store. And it is a great read. We've got uh, Alfredo Torres on art doing some really cool stuff, and it is a great time. And we also conclude the week with a big release. We've got Phoenix Resurrection issue number four. And I am a big X-Men fan, as very clear by the number of X-Men references I've been making today. But 
this is great. It actually features a number of the characters that were in the New Mutants book I talked about earlier. But it's really great because uh, Matt Rosenberg does a great job of balancing a large cast as well as bringing back classic characters that we have not seen in quite some time. It is great. Ramon uh, Rosanas on art. Really excited to see what next issue brings as we see the conclusion of Phoenix Resurrection. This, this book is crazy. It's bringing back Jean Grey. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm very excited. And uh, that's it. That's going to bring our little weekly segment to an end. There's lots of stuff. Of course, we've got Doomsday Clock. We've got Phoenix Resurrection. I was just talking about it. We've got No Surrender. And we've got a ton of really cool books that are coming out this week. It's really fun. It's really exciting. And we are really hoping to see you guys here soon. So come by, pick up some comics, and have a great day.